In Gaelic, Irish, Scottish, and Manx, myth, the Kale Leech, Irish, K-A-L-X, K-L-X, Scottish Gaelic, Cax, is a divine hag and ancestor, associated with the creation of the landscape and with the weather, especially storms and winter. The word literally means old woman, hag, and is found with this meaning in modern Irish and Scottish Gaelic one and has been applied to numerous mythological and folkloric figures in Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. Two in modern Irish folklore studies, she is sometimes known as the Hag of Bera, while in Scotland she is known as Bera, Queen of Winter. Kale Leach, old woman or hag in modern Irish and Scottish Gaelic, one four comes from the old Irish Kale Lack. Veiled one, an adjectival form of kale, veil, an early loan from Latin pallium five woolen cloak. 6789. The kale leech is often referred to as the kale leech bira in Irish and kale leech bura in Scottish Gaelic. Geroid O'Cruelowich believes this comes from a word meaning sharp, shrill, inimical beer or beer and refers to the Kellyach's association with winter and wilderness, as well as her association with horned beasts or cattle. 10. The 8th to 9th century Irish poem The Lament of the Old Woman says that the Kellyach's name is Digdi or Digdi. In the hunt of Slive Quillin she is called Malukra, sister of Ain. In the tale of the Glasgow Bitenan, she is called Byrog. Elsewhere, she is called Bui or Buach. 11. In Manx Gaelic she is known as the Kailyach. 212. The plural of Kale Leech is Kellyacha pronounced K-L-X, K-A-L-X, in Irish, Kellyachan, pronounced Caxn, in Scottish Gaelic, and Kellyachan in Manx. The word is found as a component in terms like the Gaelic Kellyach dub, nun, and Kellyachoich, owl, comma one as well as the Irish Kale Leach Fisa, wise woman, fortune teller, and Kale Leach Fisia Gach, sorceress, charm worker. Related words include the Gaelic Kaliag and the Irish Kalin, young woman, girl, Colleen, the diminutive of Kale woman one and the lowland Scots Carlin slash Carlin, old woman, witch. 13 A more obscure word that is sometimes interpreted as hag is the Irish sile, which has led some to speculate on a connection between the Kale leech and the stone carvings of Sheila and A. Giggs. In Scotland, where she is also known as Beira, Queen of Winter, a name given by 20th century folklorist Donald Alexander Mackenzie, she is credited with making numerous mountains and large hills, which are said to have been formed when she was striding across the land and accidentally dropped rocks from her creel or wicker basket. In other cases, she is said to have built the mountains intentionally, to serve as her stepping stones. She carries a hammer for shaping the hills and valleys, and is said to be the mother of all the goddesses and gods. According to Mackenzie, Beira was a one-eyed giantess with white hair, dark blue skin, and rust-colored teeth. 15. The kale leech displays several traits befitting the personification of winter, she herds deer, she fights spring, and her staff freezes the ground. 16. In partnership with the goddess Bride, the kale leech is seen as a seasonal deity or spirit, ruling the winter months between Samhain. November 1st or first day of winter, and Beltane, May 1st or first day of summer, while Bride rules the summer months between Beltane and Samhain. 17 Some interpretations have the Kale Leech and Bride as two faces of the same goddess 17 while others describe the Kale Leech as turning to stone on Beltane and reverting to humanoid form on Samhain in time to rule over the winter months. Depending on local climate, the transfer of power between the winter goddess and the summer goddess is celebrated any time between Loth Heil Bride, Imbolc, February 1st, at the earliest, La the N.A. Calic, March 25th, or Biltain, May 1st, at the latest, and the local festivals marking the arrival of the first signs of spring may be named after either the Kale Leech or Bride. 17. Loth Heil Bride is also the day the Kale Leech gathers her firewood for the rest of the winter. Legend has it that if she intends to make the winter last a good while longer, she will make sure the weather on February 1st is bright and sunny, so she can gather plenty of firewood to keep herself warm in the coming months. Two as a result, people are generally relieved if Loth Heil Bride is a day of foul weather, 
as it means the kale leech is asleep, will soon run out of firewood, and therefore winter is almost over. Two on the Isle of Man, where she is known as Kale Yok New York Gromake, the kale leech is said to have been seen on St. Bride's Day in the form of a gigantic bird, carrying sticks in her beak. 2. According to Mackenzie, the longest night of the year marked the end of her reign as Queen of Winter, at which time she visited the Well of Youth and, after drinking its magic water, grew younger day by day. In Scotland, the Kellyachin, lit. Old women, are also known as the Storm Hags, and seen as personifications of the elemental powers of nature, especially in a destructive aspect. They are said to be particularly active in raising the windstorms of spring, during the period known as a Kaliach. 1718. The Karivrekan Whirlpool, Scottish Gaelic, Coir by Trecaen, Whirlpool slash Cauldron of the Plaid, Washtub of the Kale Leech. On the west coast of Scotland, the Kale Leech ushers in winter by washing her great plaid, Gaelic, Philid Moor, in the Gulf of Karivrekan, Gaelic, Coir by Trecaen, Whirlpool slash Cauldron of the Plaid. This process is said to take three days, during which the roar of the coming tempest is heard as far away as 20 miles, 32 kilometers, inland. When she is finished, her plaid is pure white and snow covers the land. 17. In Scotland and Ireland, the first farmer to finish the grain harvest made a corn dolly, representing the kale leech, also called the carlin or carlin 19, from the last sheaf of the crop. The figure would then be tossed into the field of a neighbor who had not yet finished bringing in their grain. The last farmer to finish had the responsibility to take in and care for the corn dolly for the next year, with the implication they'd have to feed and house the hag all winter. Competition was fierce to avoid having to take in the old woman. Some scholars believe the old Irish poem The Lament of the Old Woman of Berra is about the kale leech, Kuno Meyer states, she had fifty foster children in beer. She had seven periods of youth one after another, so that every man who had lived with her came to die of old age, and her grandsons and great-grandsons were tribes and races. In Ireland, the kale leech is associated with craggy, prominent mountains and outcroppings, such as Hag's Head, Irish, Cian Cayley, meaning Hag's Head, the southernmost tip of the cliffs of Maher in County Clare. 3. Labaca Lee Wedge Tomb, Irish, Libacaley, meaning the Hag's Bed, is located near Glanworth, County Cork, and is, according to folklore, the Kellyach's grave and former dwelling where she lived with her husband, Mo Ruth, who she killed by throwing a boulder at, pinning him to the floor of the river. The megalithic tombs at Loch Crew in County Meath are situated atop Slive N.A. Kaliach, Irish, Sleabite N.A. Cayley, meaning the Hag's Mountain, and include a curbstone known as the Hag's Chair. 23 Cairn T on Slive N. A. Kaliak is a classic passage tomb, in which the rays of the equinox sunrise shine down the passageway and illuminate an inner chamber filled with megalithic stone carvings. 24. The summit of Slive Gullion in County Armagh features a passage tomb known locally as the Kaliak Barra's House. There is also a lake, where the Kaliak is said to have played a trick on the mythical warrior, Fionn Mac Cum Hale when he took on the physical appearance of an old man after diving into the lake to retrieve a ring that the Kaliak fooled him into thinking was lost. 25. Ailanakali, Ailanakali, Hag Cliff, is a cliff in County Galway. 26. The Caromore Passage tombs on the Quill Iora Peninsula in County Sligo, are associated with the Kale Leech. One is called the Kale Leech Abira's House. 27 William Butler Yates refers to the Sligo Kale Leech as the Cluth N.A. Bear. 28 In County Sligo she is also called the Garavogue Kale Leech. The Kale Leech is prominent in the landscape of Argyll and Butte, Scotland. In later tales she is known as the Kale Leech Nan Cruachan, the Witch of Ben Cruachan. Ben Cruachan is the tallest mountain in the region. Tea towels and postcards of her are sold in the visitor shop for the Hollow Mountain which also features a mural depicting her accidental creation of Loch Awe. 29 Legend has it that the kale leech was tired from a long day herding deer. Atop Ben Cruachan she fell asleep on her watch and a well she was tending overflowed, running down from the highlands and flooding the valleys below, 
forming first a river and then the loch. 2930 The overflowing well is a common motif in local Gaelic creation tales, as seen in the goddess Bones' similar creation of the River Boyne in Ireland. 31 Other connections to the region include her above-mentioned strong ties with the fierce whirlpool in the Gulf of Carivrecan. 17. She is also associated with other Scottish mountains. Ben Nevis was said to be her mountain throne. 15. The two mountains on the Isle of Skye named Bean and Akale Lich, western and eastern, after her, from which fierce storms of sleet and rain descend, wreaking havoc and destruction upon the lands below. There is a glean Calic in Glen Lyon in Perthshire with a stream named Alt Calic which runs into Loch Lyon. This area is famous for a pagan ritual which according to legend is associated to the Kale Leech. There is a small shealing in the Glen, known as either Tynan Kale Leech, Scottish Gaelic for House of the Old Women 32, or Tynan Bodach, Scottish Gaelic for House of the Old Men 32, which houses a number of heavy water-worn stones, resembling miniature human beings. 33 Roughly Rectangular the building originally measured 2 m by 1.3 m by 0.4 m high with a stone roof. 34 A replacement roof of a wooden pallet having collapsed and the whole building having become somewhat ruinous it was rebuilt by a local diker in 2011. 35 According to local legend the stones represent the Kale Leech, her husband the Bodach, and their children 36-37 and the site may represent the only surviving shrine of its kind in Great Britain. 33 The local legend suggests that the Kale Leech and her family were given shelter in the Glen by the locals and while they stayed there the Glen was always fertile and prosperous. When they left they gave the stones to the locals with the promise that as long as the stones were put out to look over the Glen at Biltane and put back into the shelter and made secure for the winter at Samhain then the Glen would continue to be fertile. 36 This ritual is still carried out to this day. In Scottish Gaelic literature, the Kale Leech was famously used to personify the internal literary critic of 18th century poet William Ross. Despite being widely viewed as a lovelorn romantic who died of unrequited love, due to the poet's many versifications of his loss and heartbreak over the 1782 marriage of his beloved Moore Ros, Ross was also capable of poking fun at himself, as in the poem Oran e Dar Ambardagus Kelly Ach Milidnan Dan exchange of verses between the poet and the hag who spoils poems.